you, my know, ladies and gentlemen. My wife did well with my outfit this evening. Thank you. So her. But indeed, this is the first annual CanCom Security Honor Our Heroes Awards Night. It's to which, ladies and gentlemen, this evening, we will be paying homage and tribute to 27 immaculate and amazing security practitioners employed by the one and only CanCom Security, your leading choice for security solutions, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. And today, of course, we pay homage and tribute for those who have gone well above and beyond in the line of duty and, quite frankly, their day to day and night tonight in the following award, uh, award ceremony. Now, I will tell you for your consideration, there will be five distinct awards we'll be giving away this evening as applicable to the scenarios we will be presenting to you. And they are going to be for your consideration as follows. The first will be the Peter Jones First Responder Award. Now, Dr. Peter Jones is North America's first known licensed medical doctor of Indigenous heritage. He obtained his degree from Queen's University in 1866. As a doctor, he improved the health of people living on reserves and reduced high rates of tuberculosis by promoting vaccination programs and advocating for public health initiatives such as better waste disposal practices and ensuring access to clean drinking water. Dr. Jones was also involved in politics and was twice elected chief of the Mississauga Ojibwe between 1874 and 1886. He used his political reach to lobby the federal government on behalf of indigenous peoples for basic human rights. He was also appointed as a federal Indian agent, a post usually reserved for non-indigenous candidates. He was involved in consultations for the 1885 Electoral Franchise Act, which gave Indian status men some voting rights without losing their status. To inform Indigenous peoples about their new voting rights, Dr. Jones published The Indian, which was the first Canadian journal for Indigenous peoples edited by an Indigenous person from 1885 to 86. Now this award is to recognize the contribution to holistic health made by our nominated security guards within the communities we serve and certainly that they serve. That being the Peter Jones First Responder Award. The second being the Chief Mukmanis Leadership Award. Now great leaders not only achieve results but empower those around them. Now Chief Mukmanis exemplified many great leadership traits including emotional intelligence, resilience, bravery, and compassion. Chief Mukmanis rallied a team of soldiers to leave their homeland and fight in the South during the War of 1812 alongside the British. Mukmanis distinguished himself and was awarded a silver mounted sword for his humility, bravery, and compassion in battle. Mukmanis and his indigenous brothers or their widows never received any pensions or payments as promised. Yet, right up until his passing, Chief Mukmanis advocated for these rights, and we would like to recognize the security guards this evening that are be to be presented with this award, of course, for their passion and commitment to leadership, a very important trait. This award is to commemorate demonstrating leadership and the positive impact you have made on the communities we serve, and again, that being the Chief Mukmanis Leadership Award. Next will be the Tommy Prince Gallantry Award. So Thomas George, or Tommy Prince, is one of Canada's most decorated Indigenous war veterans, who not only put forth significant military contributions, but is also remembered as an Indigenous advocate who fought for equality and Indigenous rights. Gallantry is described as courageous behavior, especially in battle, for which Tommy Prince was awarded uh, due to his incredible bravery and efforts in the war. Enlisting in the Army at the age of 24 in 1940, he began his wartime service as a sapper with the Royal Canadian Engineers. He joined the Canadian Special Service Battalion throughout the years, and shortly after, this battalion merged with an American unit and formed the first Special Service Force, also known as the Devil's Brigade. This is where Tommy Prince was serving as a reconnaissance expert. Now, after the war efforts ended, Tommy Prince was awarded a Silver Star 
an American Army decoration for gallantry in battle. Now, just as Tommy Prince received a glowing citation for his contributions and courageous actions, CANTCOM this evening would like to recognize our security guards with the Tommy Prince Gallantry Award. This award is to commemorate your efforts on duty and for you to achieve a renowned status with CANCOM. Fourth of the fifth awards, ladies and gentlemen, will be the Chairman Excellence Award. Now, the Chairman Excellence Award is awarded to persons who have served their community through the company's mandate. Observed, deterred, and reported protecting persons, property, and proprietary information. This award is a reflection of the recipient's ongoing commitment to ensuring the company's mandate remains in the spirit of their daily duties, reflected in the delivery and dedication to duty. That again, the Chairman Excellence Award. And the fifth of the awards, ladies and gentlemen, will be the CANCOM Medal of Heroism, as to which for lack of being provided a description, wouldn't you know it, it is a medal awarded for heroism. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, at, th at this point, I, I believe, and not to certainly start the, the night on a somber tone before I introduce our first speaker, I believe I would be remiss hard pressed and perhaps doing a disservice and an injustice if I obviously didn't speak to the fact that the security profession being obviously a very invaluable extension of the law enforcement profession in its totality. And the last 30 plus days or such obviously has not been the best of news on a reoccurring theme for the law enforcement profession with the loss as recent of yesterday of five policing professionals. Yesterday, Constable Yang in Burnaby, BC of the RCMP who for assisting by law enforcement officers with a homeless encampment unfortunately was stabbed and murdered. So I would kindly ask at this time, ladies and gentlemen, for the five law enforcement practitioners we have lost over the course of the last month, a brief moment of silence to start this evening. Thank you. So it is at this time, and to keep the energy high once again here, because we're here to obviously celebrate all those we are acknowledging, paying homage to, it is my distinct honor, privilege, and pleasure to be here to introduce a man who truly needs no introduction, he is the very visionary behind CANCOM security. I remember him once upon a time as the guy who would sleep in his cot overnight at the office. I'm sure he probably does the same thing anyways. But well, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Ronald Wells. Thanks for coming this evening. It's our first ever uh, awards night, and it's long overdue. Um, 15 years in the making, and I can probably brainstorm with other fellow members of past uh, employees that have performed and gone above and beyond, but uh, we got to start somewhere, and forgive me to those that we missed over the last 15 years, but we can tell stories and talk about that uh, over drinks. Welcome to the CANCOM Security Honor Our Heroes Awards Night. Good evening. Welcome recipients, family members, special guests, board members, and fellow co-workers, partners, suppliers, and anyone else that I missed. We started this company 15 years ago, and along the way, we have witnessed and seen many acts of heroism and served with CANCOM Security I wish we could have had all of them here tonight. However, tonight is the first time we honor our members. I'm proud to finally be honoring our guards and staff members. This is long overdue. It is important to honor our heroes and tell their stories. Their stories unite us, inspire us, motivate us, um, make us believe in the that there is good in humanity and provide us with hope. Hope is all we have in moments of terror, moments of despair, tragedy, chaos, and in the face of danger. When we select our heroes, we define the limits of our own aspirations. We fashion our ideals by the heroes we choose. The ideals that broadly define us Maybe courage, honor, justice, 
perseverance and behaviors that are needed to succeed in life, to better society, and to overcome villainy. When we are young, we look to comic book superheroes. We can't get enough of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Black Widow, many more, whichever you prefer. As we get older, and uh, I'll stop and say, you know, uh, <clears throat> one of my first heroes is my dad, you know, or your mom. Um, so, you know, the, these, these common themes change, uh, but, you know, it's always somebody that you chase and you aspire to be, I think, uh, that uh, magnifies who we want to be. So as we get older, <clears throat> we turn to our sports heroes in baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, football, cricket, or any Olympic sports, for that matter. On May 3rd, 1993, for me, it was Mr. Doug Gilmore's double overtime goal to win over the St. Louis Blues. I was 17 years old, watching the 92-93 playoffs with my hero, my dad. I was already a number 93 fan, but that sealed the deal for me that night. We wanted to be the guy who came up big. We wanted to be the guy that everybody could count on. We wanted to be the guy who carried the team through. No doubt, a moment in time you never forget. To me, Doug Gilmore possessed tenacity, passion, and heart, and those qualities I have chased my whole life. To make up and wake up every morning and compete against myself to be better than I was the day before. Thank you for being here tonight. Doug, Sonia, and Victoria, um, it means a lot, thank you. Tonight, we also welcome retired Major General David Frazier, a retired Canadian Forces officer who served as a Major General in the Land Forces Command, the country's first officer to command American troops in combat since the Second World War. Frazier's most notable role was a brigade general during Operation Medusa, which took place in Afghanistan from September 2006 as part of NATO's coalition efforts in the region. Operation Medusa took place from September 1st to 17th. The involvement in the invasion of Afghanistan intended to secure the authority over the offensive was the largest battle fought in Canadian troop since the country's involvement in the Korean War. Thank you for your service, General Frazier, and thank you for being here tonight. <clears throat> Heroes pick us up when we are down. Uh, Heroes pick, give us hope. Heroes provide a light in the dark times. Heroes solve problems, bring resolution, and heroes uh, provide resolution, heroes deliver justice. We are human and have basic needs of survival, nutrients, growth, education, safety, security, healing, happiness, health, hope, wisdom, and justice. None of us can meet these critical needs without the help of others. Every once in a while, someone extra extraordinary comes into our lives and steps up to help us. Even our heroes have their own heroes. I reached out to Doug Gilmore to assist in some charity work, which he obliged. Doug, sh Doug showed me the, how contagious helping uh, fellow mankind is. Doug allowed me to show clearly love working with people and raise awareness and funds for good causes. Just uh, recently, Doug invited me to participate in his first charity with his hero, Bobby Orr, and just this past summer we assisted and uh, my good friend here, um, Robin Yates um, of Nobis, and he uh, sponsored uh, the Bobby Orr Doug Gilmore tournament and we provided security for this event and uh, wow, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to, uh, for a great cause, so it's uh, one of those things that uh, not all of us get to do, but I'll tell you, uh, uh, we need to change a thing, I'll tell you, it's just awesome, just awesome. Heroism often benefits the span of many dimensions of human well-being, 
There are basic survival benefits, safety and healing. There are cognitive benefits of wisdom. There are motivational benefits of energy. There are emotional benefits in hope and positivity. There are social benefits in less loneliness. There are growth benefits of development. And there are spiritual benefits of morality. So, there's little wonder why we have heroes. We need them to get us through this challenging experience called life. Heroes help us survive, and they help us thrive. They help us through our worst times and prepare us for our best times. Heroes nurture us, save us, and help us become our best selves. Heroes genuinely help us meet all human needs. Perhaps the most extraordinary, extraordinary thing about heroes is that they don't have to be physically present to help us survive and thrive. They lead by example. In summary, heroes serve us with 12 functions. Heroes give us hope. Heroes energize us. Heroes develop us. Heroes heal us. Heroes impart wisdom. Heroes are role models for morality. Heroes offer safety and protection. Heroes give us positive emotions. Heroes give us meaning and purpose, provide a social connection, and reduce loneliness. Help individuals achieve personal goals and help society achieve societal goals. Tonight, we honor our heroes, and we look forward to hearing the stories of the incidents where tonight's recipients have demonstrated selfless acts of courage and heroism. Thank you. First and foremost, and I'll speak from the heart here for a moment and not necessarily as just the hired mouthpiece of the evening, but there's a sentiment I've come to learn distinctively, and it's that leadership, it is not about being in charge, it is about taking care of those in your charge. And certainly, Ron, being up here speaking about leadership, I think we can all agree we'd be hard-pressed to find someone who cares about his people more, if indicative of nothing more than this amazing event. So again, round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Ronald Wells, for Cancom Security. I will be starting here uh, with acknowledging a security professional by the name of Carlos Iglesias. He'll be the first person we're acknowledging this evening. Absolutely. <laughs> So, Carlos is <laughs> super excited and as well uh, will be the recipient of the Tommy Prince Gallantry Award. So, the scenario as to which we are going to be paying homage to Carlos this evening goes as follows. Now, on January 4th, 2022, at 1900 hours for us civilians, it's 7 p.m. <laughs> Director of Operations, Carlos Iglesias, was conducting a site visit at the Fairview Shopping Center. Now, upon entering the building, he heard what sounded like shots fired, I believe we're alluding to gunshots, from inside the mall. He then observed a male fleeing from Fairview Mall security staff with a bag of stolen jewelry in hand. So Carlos immediately took action by knocking the suspect off balance and assisting the Fairview Mall security staff in arresting this suspect. The successful apprehension of the suspect resulted in the prevention of a theft of $96,000 worth of merchandise. It is these actions and bravery that of course put Carlos forward every day and is an excellent reflection on CanCom security as a whole. Now, although this is just a single example, we thank you, Carlos, for the hard work and dedication that you put forward each and every day. So please come forward in front of an immaculate room of your peers and accept the Tommy Prince Gallantry Award, ladies and gentlemen, Carlos Iglesias. And the award, ladies and gentlemen, flying by the seat of my pants here, will be uh, presented by retired General David Fraser.
Rosa Glaciers, ladies and gentlemen. And just prior, if I get the timing right, to our next course arriving at our tables, <laughs> the uh, last uh, security practitioner will acknowledge at this time who, again, will be the recipient of a Tommy Prince Gallantry Award. Once again, will be presented by the one and only retired General David Fraser. This will be for Harinder Singh, who hopefully is here. Where's Harinder? There he is, Harinder Singh. So, ladies and gentlemen, the scenario as it relates Harinder Singh, ladies and gentlemen, was conducting mobile patrols uh, in the town of Kapis Casing, believe it, way up north. Now, as part of a joint, uh, or rather, this was part of a joint effort, I should say, with other emergency services. Now, Harinder observed two female miners that appeared to be in perceivable distress. The two miners were lying across the highway in a live lane and shouting, I want to die, plausibly suicidal. Security guard Harinder Singh attempted to engage with both of these females to render mental health first aid by exiting his, ve uh, pardon me, exiting his vehicle. Both females at this point split up and each of them attempted to jump over the railing at opposite sides of the bridge, perceivably looking to end their life. The action of Harinder running to both female parties multiple times and preventing them from doing so, preventing them from jumping off the bridge, undoubtedly and unequivocally saved both of these females' lives. So for certain, CanCom security values Harinder's quick thinking, hard work and compassion for human life, which absolutely has resulted in both females being alive today. So once again, the recipient of the Tommy Prince Gallantry Award presented by retired General David Fraser. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Harinder Singh. Well done. Perfect, thank you kindly. We'll go on with a big group of security practitioners this time, and I apologize for the pronouncement of the name, but uh, we are gonna pay tribute right now to Ethan, is it Miyaki, Mijaki? Mijaki, okay, I was close. Tyson Otaska, did I get that? We're good, okay. Pierre de Bosquage, uh, I apologize again for the pronounce. De Bosque. <laughs> Bosque. Uh, Steve Kiefer, who is not here tonight. Martin Francis and Kamisha Paul. So all those persons I name, you can certainly come forward, take your place center stage, and the scenario as to which will be indicative of awarding all these fine individuals the Chairman Excellent Award, which will be presented by the one and only, ladies and gentlemen, 93, Doug Gilmore. And for that matter, the Medal of Heroism as well, which will be presented once again by retired General David Fraser. So a whole whack load of awards going to these fine individuals. So ladies and gentlemen, the scenario goes as follows. On April 5th of this year, 2022, at approximately 0130 hours, 1.30 in the morning, CanCom patrol units were alerted to and observing multiple suspicious vehicles that were driving erratically around M Chiching, uh, pardon me, Chiging First Nation. Shortly after reports of a shooting, CanCom patrol units observed the same vehicles fleeing from the general area. CanCom patrol units called in a tip to 911 dispatchers, which resulted in emergency services closing the bridge in Little Current to deny access off of the island. Now, the suspects were apprehended by emergency services at the swing bridge. All suspects were subsequently charged with the murder of a non-band member. Caught, arrested, charged for murder as a result of these fine immaculate practitioners, ladies and gentlemen. So certainly, CanCom patrol units played a critical role in the apprehension of these individuals by directly communicating with emergency services. So certainly, on the behalf of CanCom management, we would like to thank these folks, this team, for their bravery, commitment, and dedication during a tense emergency situation. So Ethan, Tyson, Pierre, Steve, Martin, Kamisha, ladies and gentlemen, huge round of applause. Absolutely outstanding. So ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Arman Kumar will be presented with the Chief Mukmanis Leadership Award, presented by, once again, the one and only Mr. Doug Gilmore. And the scenario this is indicative of goes as follows. On August 29th, 
of 2021 at approximately 1600 hours, four o'clock in the afternoon. Security supervisor Arman Kumar was patrolling the retail spaces at Yorkdale Mall. Now at this time, Arman noted the sound of what sounded like gunshots. The patients of the mall started to panic and ran in every direction. Arman immediately began conducting emergency crisis management and strategic unit placement for lockdown procedures. Now, Arman coordinated with Yorkdale security to ensure that all patrons were placed in lockdown within stores and service corridors, otherwise being safe. Now, Arman further assisted with positioning CANCOM security staff appropriately around the mall while Toronto Emergency Services were conducting a search for the suspect. So certainly, on behalf of CANCOM management, we would like to thank Arman for his undeniable bravery, commitment, and dedication during an otherwise tense emergency situation. Again, huge vivacious round of applause. Arman Kumar, well Hello. done. You could have stayed up here the whole time, by the way. You didn't need to rush down there. We all wanted to admire you, but it's too late now. Sit down. The moment passed. It's all right. What do you think this is? Holy smokes. No. Well done, Armand. Well done. So uh, I apologize. Kamisha was not here to receive her award, so we'll make sure this is taken care of. So Kamisha, you can come center stage here. Have your momentous moment. Huge round of applause. Amazing. Next time, I'll cue up your entrance music. I know this was all planned, but that's okay. We'll do it better next time. Amazing. Well done. The team at Responder would like to recognize the following individuals for their consistent high level of investigative professionalism, dedication, and accurate reports. With over 275 alarm responses, Ms. Hardeep Kaur takes home tonight a $300 cash prize. With 129 alarm responses, Mr. Parminder Singh takes home a $200 prize. And with 46 responses, Mr. Rahul Kumar takes home a $100 prize. We at Responder would like to thank all of the security staff, operation support, and the management team at CANCOM who consistently and unflinchingly answer the responder call. We are proud to be your partner and look forward to working with each and every one of you. Congratulations to all the winners tonight. Thank you, Clifford. Cliff is, uh, yeah, I'll never forget the day we came in the office. We sat down, and just like uh, two peas in a pod, we hit it off, and yeah, like you heard it, 17,000 alarms later, here we are. Thank you uh, to the recipients here and your loyal and dedicated service, and uh, be safe out there. Thank you. All right, folks, so as you're enjoying the remnants of the main course, which Absolutely delicious. Uh, we'll continue on, certainly, with our award ceremony here. And uh, the next two security guards we are going to pay tribute to will be Sarah Bennett and Roland Crowell. And they will be presented, absolutely, a round of applause. Yes, indeed. You can take your, take your place center stage here. And uh, they will be awarded, both uh, Sarah and Roland, the Chairman Excellence Award, presented by, once again, ladies and gentlemen, number 93, Doug Gilmore. And the scenario goes as follows. And that's the reason why I was never the announcer at the Leafs game, but nevertheless, here we go. <laughs> On January 2nd, 2022, at approximately 0620 hours, security guards Sarah Bennett and Roland Crowell were patrolling the community of Saugeen First Nation when they were approached by the Ontario Provincial Police, the ODOTs, requesting assistance and located a stolen vehicle in the area. Now, security staff patrolled the community and observed the gray jeep in question and informed the Ontario Provincial Police. 
The suspect was aggressive and engaged in a physical altercation with both police and security. The security staff assisted police in the arrest of the suspect. So for certain, on behalf of CanCon management, we would like to thank Sarah and Roland for the commitment and level of professionalism during an otherwise tense emergency situation. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Bennett, Roland Crowell, a huge round of applause. Well done. Simply fantastic. All right, so our next recipient will be AJ. Is AJ here? Take the place, center stage. There we go. So AJ will be the recipient of a Chairman Excellence Award, again, once again, presented by the one and only Duck Gilmore. And the scenario this is indicative of goes as follows. On April 26, 2021, at approximately 22.58 or 10.58 in the evening, Mobile Supervisor AJ was conducting community patrols in the Mchigang, and again, my apologies for the pronunciation, First Nation, when he observed a female walking along Highway 551. The female then began to lay down in the middle of a live lane of the highway, and AJ took immediate action, pulling in behind the female and activating the emergency vehicle lights. This action prevented the female from getting run over by any passing vehicles. On behalf of CanCon management, we would like to thank AJ for his bravery, commitment, and dedication regard for human life during a tense emergency. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ, well done. Simply stunning. Uh, so our next award here, uh, will actually uh, uh, be awarded to Arvinder Singh. Where's Arvinder? <laughs> Center stage. And uh, this will be the Chairman, Ex uh, pardon me, Chairman e Excellence Award. Uh, and this will be presented by, once again, retired General David Fraser, ladies and gentlemen. And the situation goes as follows. So on October 1st of this year, 2022, at approximately 22, 22 hours, 10, 22 in the evening, Mobile Supervisor Arvinder Singh responded to an alarm call in the greater Toronto area. Now, upon arrival, Arvinder noted signs of forced entry and a suspect inside this respective facility. Arvinder took up a position of cover and called emergency services to attend. Upon the arrival of emergency services, the suspect was taken into custody without incident and the situation was under control. On behalf of CanCom management, we would like to thank Arvinder for his bravery, commitment, and dedication during this tense emergency situation. Recipient of the Chairman Excellence Award, ladies and gentlemen, Arvinder Singh. <laughs> so our uh, next recipient will be Parminder Singh. Parminder? So Parminder Singh as well will be the recipient of the Chairman e Excellence Award, once again presented by retired General David Fraser, and the situation goes as follows. So on October 1st, again, of this year, uh, 2022, uh, at approximately 10.22 hours, security guard Parminder Singh assisted with stopping a very large theft at a sporting life store at the Greater Toronto, or pardon me, in the Greater Toronto area. Now, Parmindo, while monitoring the store, noticed two suspects acting in an otherwise suspicious manner. Parmindo contacted loss prevention staff inside the store and assisted with stopping the individuals while they were attempting to steal approximately $10,000 worth of merchandise. The quick thinking and strong communication skills of Parmindo prevented patrons inside the store from getting hurt. Now, both suspects were arrested and handed over to Toronto Police. All merchandise in this matter as well was all recovered. So again, on behalf of CanCom Security, CanCom Management, we would like to thank our vendor, or pardon me, Parminder rather, for his bravery, commitment, and dedication during this emergency situation. Well done. Parminder, see you, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, coming up as a pair will be uh, Mitzi, or Midath Markum. Mitzi, did I say that correctly? There we go. And uh, Divyanshu. Divyanshu, I hope I said that well. Not here? Divyanshu is not here, but uh, 
Mitzi, for certain, come forward, take your place, rightfully so, center stage. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, as the story goes, it would be on July 1st of 2022, at approximately 1900 hours, 7 p.m., Mobile Patrol Guard uh, Midath Markum, or Mitzi, and Dibianchu were patrolling the Brunswick House First Nation community. Now, while patrolling, these security guards heard a loud noise coming from a residence within the community. The security guards attended the residence and observed a male running out the front door. After checking the residence, they found that the female had been assaulted and required medical attention. A call was then placed to emergency services advising uh, of the suspect, or pardon me, of the suspect and the need for medical assistance for that matter. Uh, so these guards remained on site and provided first aid as well as emotional support to the victim and her children. So for certain, for these courageous events as they unfolded on behalf of CanCom Security, absolutely we thank Mitzi and Dibianchu for their bravery, commitment, and dedication. A huge round of applause. Well done. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so we're going to pay homage right now to Harman Singh Swatch. Is Harman here? Harman Singh Swatch. Immaculately groomed, three-piece suit. A man who holds a special place in my heart. Three-piece suit, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Come on down. Take your place rightfully so. Center stage. Recipient of the Peter Jones First Responder Award presented by the one and only Doug Gilmore. And these, is, uh, yeah, absolutely. And the story goes as follows. So on February 7th, 2022, approximately 1,800 hours at 6 p.m. in the afternoon, mobile responder Harman Singh, pictured center stage. Uh, Harman Singh Swatch, for that matter, was leaving Markville Mall when he observed a vehicle strike a light pole. Now, Harman contacted emergency services and remained on scene, assisting the driver and rendering the vehicle inoperable. Harman rendered first aid as the victim complained of no feeling on the left side of his body. Certainly very alerting or very, di very discerning. Harman remained on site until the arrival of the respective emergency services. So certainly due to Harman's quick reaction and noticing the severity of the medical distress, the EMS attendants advised that the victim had a better survival rate for Harman's actions. So absolutely on behalf of CanCom Security and a room full of your amazing peers here, Huge congratulations for all your actions, for your bravery. Well done. Well done. Well done. Rahul Kumar, come on down from my right side here, center stage. The recipient of the Peter Jones First Responder Award, this time presented by retired General David Fraser. And this will take place in the town of Capas Casing. So on April 25th, 2022, at approximately 0300 hours, security guard Rahul Kumar was alerted of a medical distress at one of the local evacuee hotels. Now, Rahul immediately attended to the resident's room to find a male convulsing, as it is described. There was a stack of used needles next to the male. Rahul recognized that the male was plausibly overdosing on drugs and administered Narcan, which indeed helped the person's condition. Rahul remained with the victim and monitored his condition until the arrival of paramedics, certainly undoubtedly saving a life that day. Absolutely. Rahul, on behalf of CanCom, well done. Congratulations, obviously, for your actions, your bravery on that day. Well done. Hardeep Kaurbrar is Hardeep here. Come on down. Amazing. So Hardeep will be the recipient of yet another Peter Jones First Responder Award presented by Mr. 93, Doug Gilmore, once again in the town of Capus Casing. This story would go as follows. On May 21st of this year, 2022, at approximately 2,100 hours, security guard Hardeep Kaur Brar was responding to an emergency call for service. Upon arrival, Hardeep observed a female in distress the female was running toward live lanes of traffic. Hardeep was able to de-escalate the situation until the arrival of emergency services, undoubtedly once again plausibly saving a life that day. For certain Hardeep, on behalf of CanCom Management, we would like to thank Hardeep for your commitment, professionalism, compassion during a tense situation. Huge round of applause. Congratulations. 
Hardeep. Well done. Fantastic. So our next recipient will be Nicholas Autower. Is Nicholas here? Ladies and gentlemen, Nicholas, a fan favorite here this evening. First round draft pick with Cancom Security. So, so Nicholas will be the recipient, well deserving of the Peter Jones First Responder Award presented by, once again, retired General David Fraser. And this story would go as follows. On September 23rd, 2020, at approximately 0208 hours, mobile supervisor Nicholas Attar responded to an alarm at a residence in the greater Toronto area. Upon arrival, Nick found a disoriented male that seemed to be in medical distress. While investigating the situation, Nick found that the male may have been suffering from signs of a stroke. Nicholas contacted emergency services and rendered first aid to the victim until the arrival of paramedics. Nick was able to communicate the status of the victim to family members, and this is certainly one example of the compassion and professionalism that Nicholas showed, not only on that specific day, but continues to do so on a daily and nightly basis for that matter. So absolutely on behalf of CanCom, on behalf of all of us here, a huge congratulations to Nicholas for your commitment, professionalism, and compassion. Huge round of applause. Nicholas, Nicholas Carr, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. Have a nice little cadence coding here with uh, Roland Crowell. Roland, is Roland here? Woo! Roland Crowell. Representing the far right corner of Castle Loma. There he is. Take your place center stage here. So this will be the Peter Jones First Responder Award presented by, again, the one and only Doug Gilmore. The scene of this scenario would take place at the Saugeen First Nations and goes as follows. Security guard Roland Crowell was attending to a panic alarm. Roland arrived on site within minutes and was met outside by a female who was perceivably in distress. Roland entered the home and found a female on the floor unresponsive with another female trying to rake her with no success. Now Roland began to check for vitals and could not find a pulse and the victim was not breathing, what we call VSA or vital signs absent. Roland began to check for vitals and could not find a pulse. Uh, again, the victim was not breathing. And subsequently, Roland began CPR while his partner contacted emergency services. Roland then administered a total of three shots of Narcan nasal spray. And at first, there was no response. However, the young female then began to breathe more steadily as security continued CPR. Now, several minutes later, the young female woke up and responded to security what was, what was described as fading in and out of consciousness. Emergency services did inevitably arrive on scene to take over, and as a result of Roland's compassion, training, and care, for certain, a life was saved that day. On behalf of CanCom, Roland, certainly everyone here, CanCom Security, CanCom Management, we would like to thank Roland for his commitment, professionalism, compassion during this situation. Roland Crowell, Roland, Roland sir. Roland Crowell, come on up. Peter Jones First Responder Award. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Ronald Crowell received a call from OPP Communication Center requesting assistance in locating a person in the area of French Bay Road and 2nd Avenue South. Now, EMS uh, Fire and OPP arrived on scene to pull the mail from the water near a private beach gate. Emergency services administered CPR, and the mail was stable upon departure from the scene. Now, as a result, undoubtedly of Roland's actions, Emergency services were given quick access to a closed area, allowing them time to save the victim. So Ronald, not Roland, Arnold with, or pardon me, Ronald with an end. Absolutely, we thank you on behalf of CanCom Security, CanCom Management. Well done, ladies and gentlemen, Ronald Quell. And the first responder. Well done, sir. Well done. The recipient of yet another, and plausibly, I believe, the last of the Peter Jones First Responders Award. This will be to Murdan Dogan, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. Murdan, of course, 
So, so ladies and gentlemen, Murdan will be the recipient of the Peter Jones First Responder Award presented by the one and only Mr. Doug Gilmore. And this takes place on December 7th of 2018. So at approximately 1,700 hours, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, Security Supervisor Murdan Doggan was conducting traffic control at Yorkdale Mall in the East Underground. Murdan noticed a male in a vehicle accelerating at a rate of speed, or a high rate of speed for that matter, and subsequently colliding with several vehicles and into the wall. Now, Murdan called for emergency services, began administering life-saving CPR and first aid to the driver. Now, as a result of his rapid response, Murdan saved this individual's life. Murdan remained on scene with the victim until the arrival of emergency services. So absolutely, once again, on behalf of CanCom Security, CanCom Management, Murdan, well done. Huge round of applause. Well done for your professionalism and your compassion in this otherwise, otherwise tense situation. situation. It's um, a pleasure to be handing out these rings because they truly represent a brotherhood, a sisterhood, like on a, no other. Um, uh, Sean, come up here, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna make it that easy. Um, <clears throat> Sean and I go way back. Um, We've shared the podium and award ceremonies uh, back in the day. And uh, here we are about 26 years later. And it's, uh, it's a pleasure to say you're my brother and to work alongside you. And if I can open this, it's almost like a proposal, right? You're nervous trying to get the ring out. Mm. No knees, no knees. <clears throat> it's um, when we designed this ring, it uh, I really put some thought and heart into it. Uh, it's got a sapphire ruby in the middle. Uh, every year, uh, every five years of service, you get a diamond put into the ring. Uh, this is Sean's fifth year recognition of being in uh, serving in management and the capacity of management and service to CanCom, service to the brotherhood and the sisterhood here at CanCom Security. And Sean, uh, thank you for being on one hell of a ride. Thank you for being there, having my back, having everyone else's back for that matter. Um, I will say this about Sean, you know, when, when the chips are down and we need somebody to go collect or reason with somebody who's difficult, Sean has no problem making that call or having that door knock. Um, and it, it really, you know, allows us to play the, the good cop, bad cop type of thing. So, uh, you know, I, I can be the nice guy. And, and I get calls like, well, what's wrong with that guy? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's just, but um, Sean, uh, you make life easier. And it's, it's such a pleasure to, to have you work with us. And I look forward to another 5, 10, 15 years. Thank, Thank you, you for your service. service. Thank, Thank you for your friendship. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, recipient of our company service uh, ring and uh, is Merton Dogan. Merton, come on up. Mernon uh, started off uh, in the trenches, uh, has worked diligently alongside all of us and has been learning and is uh, dedicated uh, in like no other that I've ever seen. Uh, all hours, doesn't matter the hour, he answers the call. And uh, Merton, thank you. Thank you for all that you do and your dedication. And to you I present for the first five years of the recognition Thank you for your service. We're going to go get everybody. All right. Um, that pretty much wraps up our awards for the night. Um, you, I'm going oh. I'm I'm to have to kick the boss over for a moment here because unbeknownst to the lot of us, including Mr. Wells, there's actually one more award 
to give away. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you may or may not know, leadership, it is not about being the best. It's about making other people better. And I think we'd be all hard-pressed to say that no, those who know Ron Wells and have crossed paths with Ron Wells in some way, shape, or form have been inspired, have been influenced to be the best version of themselves and continue to excelling in a successive pathway upwards. So I'd like to call upon the respective CanCom staff here to pay homage to, again, the one and only Mr. Ron Wells. Pay tribute as well deservingly. So don't go anywhere. Stick, stick around here for a second. Huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Standing ovation, Ron Wells. <laughs> Story goes long time ago. <laughs> like you said, behind a successful company, there is a very successful, very uh, uh, amazing person. We all admire our brother, our leader, who has brought not just the company. People, people say, people think about company. At CanCom Security, we are not just a company. We are a family. Right? Who we are? Bobby. There you go. And everything's because of this man that we have here. On behalf of all our management, I want to call also Paul, please. Paul? Yeah. I would like to call Rick as well. Rick, come over. Sabrina, we have Megan, Shaba, please come over, Ryan, I'm, oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm right here, I'm already here. <laughs> yeah, Miriam, please, representing all of the finance, but this is not it. Cancom, if you look at your right, look at your left, look in front of you guys, look behind you, every single one of you is Cancom, right? Thank you very much for coming tonight. And there's one more small award for Mr. Wells, which is this plate. And so again, thank you for everybody for coming. We, uh, we recognize a strong leader, uh, someone that I've known for 30 years. Uh, we laugh and joke a lot. Um, it's not always easy. Uh, it can be difficult. We've been through lots and lots of stuff. Um, so yesterday, the day before, we, we started thinking about what we could do uh, to recognize the person that is here today recognizing us, because we feel that's just as important. Uh, so he knew none of this, um, and, and we're good at that. That's we're in security. So, uh, so, so one other thing that we want to present Ron with today um, is a sculpture with a diamond on top. Um, it's our company logo, and it says "Tough as a Diamond," uh, Ronald Wells. So thank you very much for the In this play, if you show it to everybody, you will find signatures from everywhere. Chagin First Nation, Sagin First Nation, Wiki First Nation, Woo! Ottawa team, Kelowna team, and Toronto team. We, on behalf of the whole Cancun family, we want to say thank you very much. Hey guys. You know what, I was, um, when uh, you spoke your speech, you said that you used to watch Doug each night, watching him lead, watching him in inspire his team. You're our Doug. You're our number 93. 
You inspire us every single day. You challenge us to be better every single day. We are what we are, and the hero of the heroes is right here. All because of you, Ronald Wells, my brother, my inspiration, my hero. I love you. Thanks, little brother. Uh, just trying to collect my thoughts here. Wow, um, I'm a little. I'm really overwhelmed. Um, you know, uh, I, there's one guy missing here tonight. It's my hero is my dad. Couldn't make it tonight. Um, this place is pretty significant. I remember coming here. Uh, I was uh, five years old with him. And just wish he was here. <clears throat> but um, I feel the love. <laughs> I'm very proud of all of you, and I'm proud of uh, all the faces here. Paul, <laughs> Rick, <laughs> um, you know, partners. Uh, I'll share one story today that was just uh, totally awesome. Um, there's a saying in any industry, when you're accepted by your own, you made it. And I went to the Canasta show today, the first time I went to the Canasta show, people would stop and say, well, there's the, there's the Lincoln guy. And I didn't have a name. <laughs> uh, you know, we have a good social media presence, which is you know, pretty, pretty cool. But today, I, I couldn't take five steps without getting stopped. And, you know, people saying hi and old friends and old faces. And I'll tell you, I, I felt really, really uh, loved today and accepted by my own. And now this, just uh, the cherry on the cherry on top, guys. I love y'all. I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, one last thing. I just, you know, Chief Duke Pelche, General Frazier, Doug Gilmore and his family, Robin Yates. Uh, we got lots of work to do, my friend. Uh, lots of work. Scott Suter. Um, is, uh, where is he? Where's the old man back there? There he is, Ron, Ron Britt. <laughs> uh, we went to war together, you know, me and him went to war together every day with the boards and we fought together and, you know, we forged a great friendship over the years and there's so many people that um, I want to thank. And I look around, you know, even Sabrina, we worked in the same company about 26 years ago and here she is and I've got such great talent around me and um, I'm just very fortunate to have the talent and Paul and Rick and the expertise around me, and whew, um, we're going to grow and we're going to serve. Uh, but I, I just want to polish off, you know, about tonight's theme and honoring our heroes. And uh, I'll share one more last story. And we're all more alike than you realize. You know, um, we were all little once, and we all grew up, and we all have a hero uh, we aspire to. And uh, that nothing drove that more home. Uh, drove that home to me when hanging out with Doug, and he says, I want to introduce you to my hero. And I just thought, huh, okay. And uh, no, not his dog. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, meeting Bobby Orr, the legend, and it's just like, wow, you know, we're, we, we have a lot in common more than you realize. And you need heroes uh, to, to get through those tough times. And I, uh, I dig deep. You know, I, I, I study successful people every day. I read. You know, I'm not a basketball fan, but, you know, I watched uh, the Michael Jordan uh, documentary and I just love how competitive that guy is and how the drive he has to want to win and, and, and how he led, you know, so stuttering leadership and stuttering, studying, you know, uh, how people lead, you know, and um, I think I drove Doug crazy for the first two hours when I first met him because all I wanted to talk about was <laughs> his captaincy and his leadership and and uh, he couldn't wait to get the next shot of uh, vodka into me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we had a great time. Uh, it was awesome. And I'll never forget the first time me and Doug hung out. Um, so uh, thank you for coming. I look forward to next year. Uh, we, you know, we have our, our, our golf tournament, which supports First Nations hockey. Uh, you know, that's, that's a passion of mine. You know, I want little kids to be able to lace up. So, you know, we have that on the go. And... Um, you know, this journey's led me to people like uh, David Fraser, who uh, the more I've read about him and learned about him and, uh, 
you know, funny enough, I kind of served in, under him d indirectly when I was in the Army Reserve. Never met him until now. <laughs> but uh, this, this whole journey has led me to some great people. And all of you in this room right now, uh, thank you for coming and for the individuals that serve the communities. That's what's more important to me is not just CanCom, but the, the communities and the result of what they do and how they put themselves uh, you know, in front of harm's way. It's, it's not expected, and that's why I think it's so important to recognize the individuals. It's not expected, but when you do, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.